Hey guys, my second video of this week, keeping up my promise to you guys to be more regular with them. Uh, the idea for this video was uh, some, some questions in the, uh, in the comment section of my sugar video. And people said, what about insulin? No. So for those of you who aren't familiar, what is insulin? Okay, so insulin is a hormone secreted by the pancreas that uh, lowers blood sugar. Okay. So, not to get too technical, but essentially the way uh, insulin works, we call this insulin-dependent glucose transport, is that when your blood sugar rises, you can't, you, like, you eat something with carbohydrate or whatever, your blood sugar rises, and in response, your pancreas releases insulin. That insulin hooks up with receptors on your cell surface, okay? Whether it be muscle, fat, um, those are the main two that insulin affects, um, and it causes what we call the translocation of GLUT4 receptors, okay? So GLUT4 receptors are the thing, are these, these proteins, these receptors that sit in the, I'm sorry, these um, GLUT4 um, transporters, okay? And they sit in the nucleus of the cell. And when insulin hooks up uh, to the, to the uh, insulin receptor, it causes translocation of that, of that uh, transporter to the cell surface. And then once it's on the cell surface, it allows glucose to come in. More information than you guys needed, but I like to give you everything. So that's great. It lowers blood glucose, it gets glucose into the muscle, but it also gets glucose into fat. Uh, insulin also has some other effects. So insulin uh, decreases lipolysis, okay, which is the um, basically the release of fat from fat cells. Okay, so the chopping up of, of, uh, of um, or the, the um, uh, it's hard to describe, but basically breaking down uh, triglycerides that are stored in fat. So it inhibits that process. Uh, it increases the rate of fat storage, okay, increases uh, lipogenesis, we call, uh, and it has some other effects. And so people will, will have this, uh, this idea of insulin that insulin is um, that you don't want to have ever have any insulin because insulin uh, blunts is gonna is gonna cause you to gain fat, okay? And so people say, well, you know, I don't I, I eat low carb because I don't want to release insulin. Well, like anything, it's not just black and white. Okay, so what we need to understand is that even though you yes, if you increase insulin levels. Um, it will have an inhibiting effect on lipolysis and on beta oxidation, which is the process of fat, of fat oxidation, okay? Important point to consider, a lot of people talk about lipolysis and they equate that with, with um, which is the liberation of, fat, of uh, free fatty acids from triglycerides as fat burning. It is not. So fat loss, the process of fat loss is two steps. Lipolysis, which is the freeing of those fatty acids, and then the, the burning or oxidation of those fatty acids, okay? You can free up those fatty acids, but then if they're just re-esterified, they're restored, okay? So no net loss, that can happen. So that sun goes up, um, and people have this feeling that, okay, that's gonna shut down all fat burning everywhere. That's not how it works, okay? Uh, it is concentration dependent. So if you release a little bit of insulin, it doesn't, yes, it inhibits fat burning, but inhibit is not the same thing as completely stop. Okay, people confuse those two. Inhibit means you blunt it or you reduce it. Okay, so if you only if you only raise this a little bit, it only reduces it a little bit. Okay, and if you have a high carb meal at one time of the day, assuming you're tracking your overall macros for the day, let's say you're eating 200 grams of carbs a day, and you have 100 at one meal, right? Well, that means that other meals you're going to have lower carbohydrate because you still got to hit your daily macros. So even though insulin was high at one meal, it's going to be lower at other meals, okay? It's a 24-hour thing. And also, you have to realize that these processes of fat burning, lipolysis, beta oxidation, um, fat storage, lipogenesis, all of them are always going on simultaneously, okay? You're always losing fat and gaining fat simultaneously. But it is the relative rates of each that will determine your net body composition, okay? I'll say it again. Lipolysis, beta oxidation, lipogenesis, all going on at the same time, okay? 
Now, if you eat a really high calorie, if you're eating really high calories, okay, you are going to store more of those calories. So lipogenesis is going to exceed the rate of lipolysis and beta oxidation. But if you're in a caloric deficit, beta oxidation and lipolysis are going to exceed the rate of lipogenesis. Okay, and your net effect is going to be a loss of body fat. All right, these are very important things to consider. So, what we also have to keep in mind is that people talk about low carb, high carb, etc., etc. Those are all relative terms. Okay, low carb for me may be high carb for somebody else, and vice versa. Uh, a great example of this is Alberto Nunez. Alberto is like 170 pounds and diets on 400 grams of carbs a day. Okay, if I took somebody else, even at his same body weight, age, sex, all that kind of stuff, had them eat the same amount of carbohydrates, would they lose fat on 400 grams of carbs a day? No. Okay, probably not. In fact, they may gain fat on that level of intake. So for them, that may be high carb, but for Alberto, that is a low carbohydrate intake because he loses fat on that, because he just has a faster metabolism. Okay, so those are relative terms. Yes, in order to lose fat, you are going to need to reduce calories. And typically, you are going to have to reduce carbohydrates and fats, okay, in order to accomplish that goal of establishing a caloric deficit. But you can eat low carbohydrate and gain fat. <gasps> you do not require insulin to store body fat. Your body can do it without insulin, okay? By the same token, you can lose fat and eat higher carbohydrate. Now, it's going to depend on your overall metabolic rate, but you can lose fat like Alberto. Like me, I can lose fat usually on like 200, 250 grams of carbs a day. A lot of people consider that high carb. I don't. Um, you can lose fat on levels of carbohydrate that cause you to release insulin. Okay, again, insulin does not shut down all fat burning everywhere. But one of the questions that came up from my sugar uh, video was, well, what about like sugary foods because they're going to cause insulin to go up much higher than, uh, than low glycemic foods and how can you store less fat uh, based on that or how can, you, how can there be no difference in fat storage based on that? Well, glad you asked. For this we'll need the bio lane wipe off board. Alright, so if we look here, if we look at a meal that causes insulin release, okay, so a Let's say a high GI meal here versus a low GI meal here, okay? As you can see, and this is our time on the x-axis and insulin concentrations on the y-axis, okay? A low GI meal, low glycemic index, is going to cause a slower rise in insulin and a lower peak, okay? The peak's going to be lower. A high glycemic carbohydrate meal is going to cause a higher rise, a higher peak of insulin. But check out what happens. It goes back down to baseline faster. Okay? And then a low glycemic meal goes up slower and comes down slower. The area under the curve, assuming carbohydrate and fiber are the same, is going to be about the same for insulin response. Okay? So your net overall insulin response is going to be the same. So just looking at the peak is not the most important thing. You need to look at the area under the curve. And the area under the curve is going to be about the same as long as carbohydrate intake and fiber is the same. Okay? Another thing we need to point out, fat burning, because we talk about uh, you know, insulin inhibiting fat burning, fat burning is not the same thing as fat loss, as we talked about. Again, these processes are all going on at the same time. So those are very important things to keep in mind. Uh, if, you're, if you're equating calories, you're equating carbohydrate intake, and you're equating for fiber, okay, because fiber has an impact. Fiber is not as digestible and it's thermogenic. So if you're having low GI carbohydrate source, like let's say 100 grams of that, but it's got 10 grams of fiber versus 100 grams of straight sugar, that's not a valid comparison because that fiber is going to, is going to have an impact because it's thermogenic, not because of the slow, slow delay of, um, of insulin release. So, uh, is insulin important? Yes, but calories and carbohydrate, total carbohydrate are driving insulin. Insulin is not driving the other way around. Okay, people get the cart before the horse. 
Uh, some other things that I hear about insulin is that, uh, or even glycemic index, people make a big deal of glycemic index. I have yet to see really when calories are controlled, the glycemic index makes a difference on fat loss or fat gain. Uh, I haven't seen that research. In fact, I've seen the opposite, that it doesn't make a difference. Uh, part of that is probably because when you, when glycemic index, the way they measure glycemic index, and it's a scale from 0 to 100 typically, um, is they take 50 grams of a carbohydrate source and they looked at the, the overall glycemic response, right? The, 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 the rate of glycemic response. Things like sugar and white bread and potatoes are very, very high and things that are like lower in glucose, like, fruit, like uh, fruits that are higher in fructose and things that are high fiber are lower, you know, under 50. And this kind of put this together, this idea that, okay, that, that's, that's better. Um, not necessarily. Now, typically low GI foods have more fiber and are more filling. And so from that aspects of things may in fact be better in certain scenarios because they're more filling and you're less likely to overeat on them. Okay. But when you control calories and carbohydrate, it does not seem to make a difference. Um, and when you eat protein and fiber with, with, again, these are just analyzing glycemic response with those carbohydrate sources alone. When you add protein and fiber into the mix, it tends to almost completely wash out the effects and there's almost no difference between carbohydrate sources. Um, one other thing to keep in mind, I keep hearing a lot of people say, well, branch chains and whey protein, they cause an insulin spike. Um, that may be true, but if they caused an insulin spike, and there was no corresponding increase in glucagon, which is the opposing hormone of insulin, um, then you would go hypoglycemic every time you ate protein because you would, have a, you would have insulin go up, which is going to drive glucose into cells, and you would go hypoglycemic because your blood sugar would drop. And obviously that doesn't happen when you just eat whey protein or you, or you take branched amino acids. So glucagon is works in opposition to insulin, glucagon increases fat burning, increases gluconeogenesis, okay? So, yeah, even if insulin goes up, it goes up in concert with glucagon because blood glucose stays stable, and thus any negative effects on fat burning would be uh, offset by the increase in glucagon, okay? The other thing to keep in mind is there's uh, insulin response is typically biphasic. So when you eat something high in carbohydrate, you have an initial dumping of stored insulin as soon as that carbohydrate uh, is, is sensed in the GI. It's a little bump. And then as, as you get a sustained increase in blood glucose, your pancreas produces insulin. Okay? Well, for, from, from data I've seen a few years ago, at least with branched chain amino acids, it seems to suggest that the branch chains only cause that initial transient bump. And then when you look out like an hour, you don't see an increase in insulin. So no, I don't, I, people who worry about, oh my God, I can't take branch chains because it increases insulin, or I can't drink whey protein because it increases insulin. Again, dosage is important, okay? The, the, the concentration of insulin response is important. It's not all or nothing, okay? Metabolism is not on and off switches, it's dimmer switches. It is in context of your overall calorie and carbohydrate intake. And if it's just protein, even if insulin goes up, it's being offset by increase in glucagon, okay? So at the end of the day, focus on what's important, your total calorie intake, your protein intake, your fiber intake, and your total carbohydrate intake, and obviously your fat, so your protein, carbon, fat intake. All right, guys, I hope this video has been helpful. I'll catch you next time.